The Jeep brand is probably the most iconic American automotive brand, as the original Jeep inspired many copycasts throughout the world. Whether it's the Toyota Land Cruiser, Land Rover, or Ford Bronco, none would exist if it weren't for the original Jeep. And despite going through multiple owners as a result of continued mergers of its different parent companies since World War II, it has always remained highly profitable. Whether through Kaiser's merger of Willys Overland back in the day, or in the merger of Fiat Chrysler and Peugeot that resulted in its current owner Stellantis being born, all of these outside companies wanted the same thing, the Jeep brand. Why is that? The Jeep was the first four-wheel drive vehicle that many people were exposed to, and this gives it the benefit of being the original. In fact, in some less knowledgeable circles, there are many people that think of a Jeep as any off-road vehicle, no matter the brand, as the entire brand of the Jeep has become synonymous with go-anywhere vehicles that can conquer whatever terrain you can throw at them. And because many of the best off-roaders in the world, the original Land Rover Defender, the Land Cruiser 70 Series, the Mitsubishi Pajero, the Y70 Nissan Patrol, and the Suzuki Jimny were all either only sold sporadically in the United States, just as the Bajero, Jimny, or Defender, or never sold stateside in the first place, such as the Patrol in the 70 series, the Jeep had the benefit of the doubt, because, in contrast, some form of Jeep that has borne a resemblance in appearance to the original that Americans have come to know has been continuously sold to the public on the U.S. market since the 1940s. And as a result of this, it has largely maintained a dominant uncontested position in the 4x4 market in America. Interestingly, owning a Jeep in some ways has become an entrenched part of American identity itself. And interestingly, it holds a near universal appeal among white Americans, something that is very rare in this day and age. Why is this? It's because in the minds of Jeep buyers and fans, it brings up four things to mind. The first one is World War II and America's success in that war. The second is a versatile, outdoorsy image. The third is sex appeal. And the fourth is the Jeep culture itself of the fans and the community. The association with the Jeep brand with World War II and America's victory in that war gives the brand a positive image in the eyes of both conservative and liberal white Americans, as well as in, with older white Americans in general. As with this older demographic, many of their fathers were soldiers in that war. And having a boomer father myself, I can attest that hero-worshipping what they call the greatest generation of their parents is a fairly common trait. Meanwhile, if you look at more political affiliation with conservative white Americans, World War II harkens back to a time when they saw America as more culturally unified and when America fought for what was right. Meanwhile, liberal white Americans can get on board with this too, because the enemy of World War II was Nazi Germany. And in contemporary American culture, Nazi Germany is the baseline for the ultimate evil, and World War II saw its defeat. And if there's anything Americans love, it is the idea of good conquering evil. And so for all these groups in older generations, the association with Jeep and World War II, it gives the brand immense strength in the marketplace. However, among younger white people, for whom World War II is exclusively an event that they read about in history books when they were still in school as kids, the Jeep brand retains an appeal because of its outdoorsy image, sex appeal, and simple utility. In rural America in particular, the outdoorsy image and off-road utility are huge positives as mud bogging and rock crawling are very popular forms of motorsport in rural communities. Furthermore, the traditionally smaller size of the Jeep and off-road utility have made it the perfect fit for people who hunt deer, moose, and other large game, as they're often the only vehicles that can fit down these small little hunting trails with ease and actually get through the roads, or dirt roads. In American suburbs in particular though, middle class and wealthy ones alike, Jeeps also have an appeal because that outdoorsy image is intrinsically tied to a social life that these people aspire to. When many people think of Jeeps, they think of attractive young people taking the doors off them, 
throwing a cooler in the back and going to the beach with all their friends to sunbathe, play volleyball, swim, and just have a nice time. And these things are all desirable to people because people want to be young and attractive. They want to be cool. And most importantly, they want to be liked. And for women, for women in general, this is doubly so. Because you know which fictional character is commonly depicted in a pink jeep? Barbie. An icon for generations of young white American women that has defined their perception of what is pretty. And in a society where insecurity about one's body image and loneliness are unfortunately commonplace, just buy a jeep and all of that just poof goes away. However, the cherry on top of this branding is the subculture that is associated with it and ownership of Jeeps. They have their own imagery and greeting, the Jeep wave. Not only that, the Jeep ownership experience has its own collection of unique behaviors, like parking next to other Jeep owners, taking pride when their Jeep is 100% covered in wet mud, jumping curbs when parking, and putting one wheel on top of another Jeep's exposed front wheel while leaving the other on the ground just to show off how much their suspension can articulate. Oh, and don't forget about the obligatory loud music and need to police other people's poor jobs of parking their cars by making it impossible for said people with poor jo parking jobs to get back inside their cars. And if you question any of this, they will all say, Oh, it's a Jeep thing. You wouldn't understand. A strong brand that invokes near-religious levels of devotion to it is essentially a money-printing machine. It's too bad that the products being sold are total pieces of crap. In my view, there are almost no redeeming features to a Jeep compared to other off-roaders. For starters, Jeeps are generally unreliable and they have been for decades. On older Wranglers, while the AMC 4.2 liter straight six generally holds up, the Chrysler electrical systems and automatic transmissions, they, they don't hold up at all in general. And on the newest model of Jeep Wrangler released in 2018, the recalls have been abundant. Everything from the electrics, the fuel system, and the rear axles separating from the chassis have happened, and this shows the absolute lack of build quality. Oh, and on manual transmission models, the clutch was found to overheat under regular use, posing a fire hazard. The older cars had this fire hazard problem too, as half my childhood neighbor's house burned down due to a spontaneous short on his father's Jeep's electrical system. They bought Toyotas and Hondas shortly after that incident, but that's for a story for another day. The poor reliability means that repair costs for Jeeps are high, comparable to Mercedes-Benz's and BMW's, and that is not a competition that you want to be winning. But the fit and finish, like the Mercedes-Benz's and BMW's, they're at least decent, right? Wrong. Leaks in the hard and soft tops are common, and failures in literally any part of the car is fair game after five, seven, even ten years. And the interior plastics are also cheap feeling like most other American cars, and on-road ride quality is worse than other off-roaders like the Toyota 4Runner. But the kicker to all of this is that they are unsafe. In Euro NCAP crash test results, for example, the most recent model Jeep Wrangler was the second lowest scoring car that they tested after the Fiat Panda which is coincidentally also made by Stellantis. The Jeep stored one star out of five in crash test results. That's unacceptable in 2018, because if Toyota can make their Land Cruiser 70 series off-roader, which, mind you, hasn't received a full redesign since the fall of the Soviet Union, get a five-star safety rating on the Australian New Car Assessment Program crash test results, which are identical to the Euro NCAP stuff, there is no reason a fully redesigned Jeep Wrangler with new chassis, new everything, shouldn't be able to do the same. But none of that all matters, because despite the obviously terrible products, the fact that the fans have a near-religious devotion to the Jeep brand means that Jeeps remain highly profitable, consistently, 
and it is a textbook case of the value of having a strong brand with distinctive products. Nobody confuses a Jeep for anything else, and that is something that is hard to do in today's automotive marketplace, and Jeep gets it right on that regard. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like button, leaving a comment, or subscribing to my channel. Also, be sure to check out my website, rationalordering.com. Link in the description below. That's all for today's video. See you guys next time.